CQ the X, CQ the X, CQ the X. This is Havana calling. CQ the X, CQ the X, CQ the X. This is Radio Havana calling all shortwave listeners and radio amateurs. Welcome to... Unlimited, Radio Havana's weekly feature dedicated to the fascinating world of radio communications. Hola amigos y aficionados and shortwave listeners all around the world. I am Arnaldo Arnicoro, Radio Amateur CO2 KK, that's my ham radio call sign, Charlie Oscar 2 Kilo Kilo. I'm your host here at the Access Unlimited on the air from Radio Havana Cuba with the most up-to-date information about this wonderful hobby that we all enjoy so much. You and I enjoy it a lot. It's radio. And this is a special edition of the show that will repeat parts of the weekend program that, according to reports sent by listeners, had some technical difficulties. So today I'm using, again, the high-quality audio digital system instead of using a telephone link to our studios. So you will notice a much better audio quality. Here's now item one, what I consider to be an important to understand update about the state of the present solar cycle number 24, the one that is now well into its downward slope of activity. And here is an important fact. In 2016, officially, there were 32 days with a daily sunspot number of zero. Considering the solar minimum forecast say that the minimum years won't occur for approximately two or three more years, seeing daily sunspot numbers of zero occurring now, again in March of 2017, is unusually early by all standards. As we move forward towards the next solar minimum between solar cycle number 24 and number 25, the number of days with a zero daily sunspot number will increase. Eventually, every day for many, many days and months, we'll see a zero solar activity and the solar plus at the microwave frequency of 2750 to 2800 MHz band will stay at the baseline level figures between 66 and 70 units. Way back in the year 2008, one well-known expert declared that solar cycle 24 was going to be the weakest in the past 100 years and that forecast, yes, that forecast became true. It was also said by the same expert that the upcoming solar cycle 25 would be virtually non-existent, no peak, similar to the Dalton-type solar minimum that occurred in the early 1800s. So it may happen that it will probably be very difficult to determine in actual practice when solar cycle 24 comes to an end and solar cycle 25 begins. So it is to be expected that the transition phase between the two solar cycles will be blurred. It will not be easy to recognize in actual practice. Stand by now for a few seconds as we go ahead with the station ID. I'm your host, Arnie Cotto, Radio Amateur CO2 KK. This is Radio Havana Q, the name of the show is The Exercise Unlimited, and here is our next Radio Hub related topic. Tuesday, April 18th is World Amateur Radio Day, and it marks the 92nd anniversary of Yarus International Amateur Radio Union Foundation. So the Cuban Federation of Radio Amateurs in Spanish, Federación de Radio Aficionados de Cuba, or FRC in acronym, wants to send the warmest greetings and congratulate all colleagues of the world throughout the International Amateur Radio Union Members Societies, particularly those that are part of our Yaro region to the Americas. This year, the celebration is also linked to the International Girls in ICT Day, which will be celebrated next April 27th at the initiative of the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, an activity that all Yaro member societies are going to join to celebrate. Cuba encourages the presence of the younger generations in amateur radio through circles of interest, where many radio clubs are present in coordination with the elementary, junior, and senior high schools and trade schools of the Cuban Ministry of Education, and all the other factors that participate in the vocational training of students around the country. Amigos radio aficionados, please receive my congratulations on the World Amateur Radio Day. And now, item three. Maritime Radio Day was held once again this year on the day the RMS Titanic started to sink. That was on the 14th of April of 1912, a tragedy that came to its inevitable conclusion in the early hours of the 15th of April when the big boat finally went down into the cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Radio was vital in aiding to the rescue of those who survived the disaster. 
And let me emphasize that Maritime Radio Day celebrates a global telecom service that was only based on Morse code radio telegraphy at the beginning and later added voice communications too. Its history ranges from its inception on the world's oceans around 1900 through the arrival of the advanced global maritime distress safety system in 1999, which brought a certain degree of digital automation to the service and made it more reliable. No need for operators in network practice. Marine telecom services use shortwave radio frequencies because the signals can bounce between the sea level and the atmosphere high above the earth, something that allows modestly powered transmitters to achieve global range. The lives saved from the Titanic disaster are directly connected to the sending of radio distress calls that went on the air using the then emergency request signal, CQD, because the SOS distress signal was not getting used. Although some records affirm that both CQD and SOS signals were sent by the heroic radio operator of the Titanic, who went down with the ship while still sending his distress signals to surrounding vessels. And what a difference from today's single bottom GM DSS emergency signal. Amigos, just push a button and the satellites pick it up. Despite the most up-to-date technology available, ships continue to go down, typically due to severe weather events like Hurricane Joaquin in the Bahamas that sent the cargo ship El Faro to the bottom of the Atlantic when it attempted to sail into the Category 4 and possibly at the time Category 5 tropical hurricane. And now here is Us Arni, la numero uno, the most popular section of the Access Unlimited Amigos. Today is answering a question sent by several listeners that have already obtained their amateur radio licenses and are asking me for advice regarding what equipment they should try to get. Well, amigos, here is what I recommend. Buy yourself a two-meter band in expensive handy talking. Nowadays, in some parts of the world, two-meter band FM radios are sold at rock-bottom prices, despite their excellent quality of the rigs and how well they are built. Your second radio must be a shortwave band's capable set, of course, and that may be much more complicated because the range of complexity and prices available are really hard to believe. Looking at the most recent advertisements, I cannot locate a real entry-level high-frequency transceiver at what could be best described as a shortwave band's beginner's radio. I don't find one. Those who may approach that description when bought brand new may prove to be pretty expensive indeed. You need to spend a lot of money. You should also look for two antennas, one for use on the VHF 2 meters band and capable of operating also on the UHF 70 centimeters amateur band, and a general purpose wire dipole antenna for operating on at least from 40 to 10 meters. That's the most practical part of the spectrum for all practical purposes. Notice that I do not even mention 160 and 80 meters because my long time experience tells me that such large size antennas are not very user friendly for beginners to install. And now yet another radio hobby item here at the middle of the week edition of the Access Unlimited. You can reach me by sending an email with your radio hobby questions, signal reports, and comments sent to inforhc at enet.cu. For your enjoyment, amigos, more about the results achieved from my most recent single vacuum tube regenerative receiver that tunes from 5,000 to 10,000 kilohertz, that is from 60 to 30 meters wavelength bands. The radio requires the use of a pair of classic high impedance headphones that must be at least of 2,000 ohms impedance. It uses a home-built power supply that provides 6.3 volts regulated direct current for the filament of the single pentode tube type 6AK5, that's 6 alpha kilo 5, or any of its equivalents or near equivalents like the ruggedized 5654 used by the old microwave radio relay systems around the world. That's the equivalent of the 6AK5. The plate power supply requirement for the radio to provide optimum performance need not be higher than around 45 volts. Current drain is minimal, and you may want to include a voltage regulating Zener diode too. It's really amazing to pick up very weak signals using the minimum parts count radio just described. It can also be built using a low filament voltage vacuum tube like the 3S4 so that it can be powered from two batteries. A single AA sized nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery filling the parallel connected filaments of the 3S4 and a stack of between three and six batteries of the nine volts type because the old 45, 67 and a half and 90 volts plastic batteries used by the old portable vacuum tube radios are no longer available. 
And now at the end of the show, as always, when I'm here in Havana, sunny in La Habana, Cuba, by the way, beautiful weather, here is the excess unlimited high frequency and low band VHF propagation update and forecast. Solar activity is at very low level, with near minimum solar flux not higher than 80 units or so. So do not expect band openings above 20 megahertz, even a big time for a given propagation path. See you all at the weekend edition of the Access Unlimited next Sunday and early Monday UTC day, just after the top of the hour newscast. Don't forget to set aside a little time, send me a signal report and your comments about this program. They are much appreciated. Send mail to info rhc at enet.cu and via airmail to Anicoro, Radio Havana, Cuba, Havana, Cuba. And that's all for today. This is Arnie Coro, Radio Amateur CO2KK, your host here at Radio Havana's TXS Unlimited, saying 73 and very good DX. And the last item on the menu today 